Hello and welcome! Today I have for you a French Manny tutorial using dip powders. So if you've never done that yourself and are interested in that look, stay tuned and check out what I have to show you. I am using clear and I'm not what you pink for my colors today. You could also use a pinker base color than clear. Um, Triple D has a color called lip gloss that might be a good uh, translucent pink for the base of your nail. Um, I just kind of like a clear look so that's what we're going to do today but you can mix up those colors however you like. You can do French manis with colored tips if you want. Just whatever suits you, go for it. So this French dip tray can be purchased on Amazon for like six bucks. There are a couple different variations and they all pretty much work the same. So if you don't have one, then go ahead and get your hands on one of those and pop out your dip liquids. That being said, you can do this without a French dip tray. I initially did French mayonnaise just dipping into the jar. So if you just kind of figure out the right angle, you can do it right into a jar. The French tray just makes it a little bit easier to manipulate and you'll see that here in a minute. So I've got my base liquid out. I'm going to go ahead and apply that to my nail. And then what you're going to do is slide that into the white, which I'll show you. It's kind of, I don't know, I hope it's easy to tell from this angle what I'm doing, but you really just slide your finger into the powder almost level. So I'm not like pointing my finger down. I'm not doing any kind of weird angle. I'm just kind of going with the tray. And then once you get the smile line to where you like it, just hold it for a second. And that just kind of lets the powder soak into your dip base. And then when you pull it out, tip your finger down and tap it off. That way you're not blurring that smile line. If you tap it any other direction, you're, you're gonna get like powder that kind of falls the other way, if that makes sense, and blurs your line. And then I don't dip into the clear or whatever my base color is. I pour it over like that. You can use a swatch stick if you have it, whatever, you, a little spoon is fine. Um, if you dip into the clear powder, you also run the risk of blurring that smile line by pushing it into powder. So any of the loose white powder is gonna get pushed back. And obviously because you have wet base on the bottom portion of your nail, you can't brush off the excess white powder before you dip it to clear. So I usually tap it off to do my best and then pour over the base color. And that does a good job of keeping a pretty crisp smile line. All powders are a little, not all powders, powders sometimes are a little bit different in density. Some are more fine, some are a little bit more um, like soft and fluffy. And so you'll find what you like best to work with when creating a French Manny. Um, but overall, you can use any and all of those. Uh, it just it just acts a little bit differently in the end. So I'm going to let you guys watch. I'm doing this first hand in real time for you. And then, well, I only do this hand in the video. I should say I'm doing the first application in real time for you. And then the second application, I speed up a little bit because it's just more of the same thing. So I'm going to let you guys watch for a minute as I finish this first application. And I'm going to come back with any tips that you might need for the second round through. And be sure to watch, you know, you can see on my hand right now, clear, you're like, ooh, that doesn't look clear. It brushes off clear. I know it just looks a little bit scary before you brush off the excess clear powder. So stay tuned and I'll be back in a minute to give you some more tips.
All right, so here I am with a couple of tips for you. So always brush off the excess between your dips, but in particular when using clear, I like to use a bristled brush like this. You can use a toothbrush if that's what you have handy, just don't use that toothbrush again in your mouth. Anyway, the bristles just do a better job of cleaning up all of that excess. And when you're using clear, a lot of people will have a struggle where they, they put clear on their nails and they just want like a natural look. And then they're like, but there's all these like bubbles in my clear. And a lot of that has to do with not getting all of the excess granules of powder off of your nail. So I highly recommend using a stiff bristled brush to get that excess off. And then really the only tip I have for your second dip is to try to line up your smile line. So when you go into that white powder again, just try to line it up with your original smile line that you created on your first dip, because if you don't, you'll notice the difference. So somebody looking at your nails from across the room or even just talking to you isn't gonna notice those imperfections, but you probably will. So just do your just best to line them up. It's not gonna be perfect. I mean, you're working with granules of powder, but I'm telling you, if you just line up those smile lines, you're golden and you're going to be happy with the outcome. So that is my, my biggest tip for you for round two. So I'm going to go ahead through, you know what? No, I'm not going to go away. I'm not going to go away. You can just listen to me a little bit more. So after I complete this second application, I'm going to cap and clear. So the reason, well, there are a lot of reasons to do that, and I'm going to explain the reasons I do it. So for a mani like this, I always do a clear dip on top because when you go to file and buff your nail, if you don't do a clear dip on top, you're literally filing away at the design you just painstakingly created. So any design on your nail, you want to protect it with a dip of clear so that when you're e-filing or hand filing or whatever you're doing, you're not going to buff away what you just created and make it uneven or whatever the case may be. So that is why I clear cap a design. I clear cap glitters because most colored glitters are silver on the inside. So again, if you file away at them, you're going to lose that color and have silver showing through. And if you have like a beautiful ruby red slipper looking nail, and then you've buffed or filed it, you're going to have silver specks throughout and it's just not going to look how you were intending. So that is why I cap glitters. And then the reason I cap regular like solid colors is because they're strongly pigmented. And if I'm filing away at them, I might get a marbled, a marbled, a marbled look, or um, just kind of file away at that color. Additionally, with pigments, when you touch your activator brush to your nail and you have like a pigmented color, like bright red or really blue, you're gonna then put your activator brush back into the activator jar and it's gonna tint your activator. So then if the next mani you do is white, you might get like a tint to it from that activator. But if you clear cap your mani, then the only color, not even a color, the only powder your activator is ever touching is clear. And so it keeps your activator from getting glitter or pigment in it and it just keeps it protected and pure. So those are a couple of the reasons to clear cap. I've also heard that clear acrylic dip powder is stronger than the others because the others are kind of compromised by pigment or glitter. So if you do a cap in clear, you're really going to strengthen that mani that much more. And who doesn't want a stronger mani that's going to hold up to all the things we put our nails through? I mean, I use mine like tools. I have two kids and a husband and I'm always like scraping things off the kitchen counter or opening boxes and using my nails to do it. I mean, it's probably a horrible idea, but I do it and I can trust the strength of my dip powder mani. So I'm going to let you guys finish watching. I'm going to cap and clear. I am going to file and buff off camera, but I will walk you through the finishing steps of a mani right after this.
Right, so after activating, I went ahead and filed and buffed off camera and then rinsed my nails. So I have a bristle brush like I use to dust off excess powder next to my sink and I use warm water and that brush. Do not use soap, but you do need to rinse all of that filing dust and just excess anything off your nails to get a nice clean finish at the end. And then you need to activate again, which is what I'm doing right now. So the science is, well, I'm not going to tell you the science because I don't know the science, but I know that top coat in order to cure needs activator. Now it's an interesting little dance you do because as much as your top coat needs your activator in order to cure, your activator is also kind of like poison to your jar of top coat. So I don't know if you've ever experienced your top coat getting like gunky and you're like, why did this happen? Or stringy? It's because you're getting activator in your jar. So after you touch your nail like I am right now with the brush, you need to swipe it on a paper towel before you put it back in because your brush right now is touching activator on your nail and that's poison to your finish coat, your top coat. So go ahead and swipe it off before you put it back in. So the way that dip top coat is applied is like this two to three quick swipes to your nail for your first coat. Then you're gonna come back and do a second coat and that coat can be more thorough. You can get all the way around to your sidewalls and your cuticle and then cap your free edge. But don't do that with the first coat. Do two to three quick swipes and then do your finish, your finish coat to be more thorough. Do not try to do a third coat. If you mess something up, you cannot do a third coat. You need to buff off the top coat activate again and do this process again. A third coat is not going to dry because it's not going to have that reaction to the activator. So I hope that makes sense. I hope I didn't confuse you, but I hope I maybe taught you something new about the way it works. So I'm going to finish up my top coat here. Doing this process this way gets you that perfect triple D dips top coat shine. It's the best I've seen. You will not regret it. If you haven't used triple D liquids yet, get your hands on the dip liquids there to die for. So after my top coat, I give it a couple minutes to dry and then I always finish up every mani, mani with cuticle oil. I want to keep my cuticles hydrated. If you're soaking off in acetone, it really dries things out and it's just really important I've found for your cuticle health. Some studies say it makes your nails grow better. So do it. It also smells delicious so you can't go wrong. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you learned something. If you have any questions, please drop a comment below and I would be happy to get an answer for you. So thanks so much for being here. I hope you have a great day. Bye now.